Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today I'm very excited to bring you a review for the brand new Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom number 14. This is Maximal Air Razor. Air Razor is part of the second deluxe class wave in Kingdom. And she is the first retail figure of this character since her Transmetal toy way back in the 90s during Beast Wars. She's had a couple of pre-Beast Form toys that were released through the Collector's Club over the years, but this is the first true return to form for the character. And as such, sports a realistic Falcon alt mode. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Air Razor's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll see her instructions, we'll get a look at her Fate Reveal card. Hopefully it's something new. And then we'll see Air Razor herself in both her Beast and Robot modes. I'll be doing a couple of group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So Air Razor comes in your standard Deluxe Kingdom packaging with a little tiny window where you can see the top half of the character, who's just kind of looking down right now. And you get this really nice artwork of Air Razor here along the front and side. You get her Falcon form up front. Around the bend, you get her robot form, which interestingly has a maximal symbol on her chest slash bird head, which is not actually present on the toy or her CGI design or anything. So maybe that was a change that they had made after the art was made, or it might just be artistic license, I'm not sure. And then there's a picture of the Nemesis crash in the background. Turn this around, and get the renders for Air Razor, which have a bit more like yellowish gold than the deeper oranges of the finished toy. Uh, honestly, I, I think I like the render colors a lot more, so it's a shame that they were changed. I don't think that deep orange really suits the character. Uh, oh look, look at that. She had a Maxwell symbol on the head there at one point. So that definitely explains the artwork. So again, you can see Robot and Beast modes. She takes 22 steps to transform, so she is no slouch there, and I think that's awesome. You also get this cool little cave painting of what's supposed to be her bird alternate mode. Get the Maxwell symbol there. Get your Kingdom side panel, as cool as ever. On the top, you just get another Maximal symbol, some cool other symbols, and branding. So that's that for the packaging. Let's open her up now. Well, I got another Dark Art card, so no point in showing that. All right, so here on the uh, instructions, we get Air Razor with her name, faction symbol. It's so good to see Maximal symbols again. Thanks, my day. Um, render that bizarrely has her shin bending in half. I guess they mistook that for a knee. These are up here, folks. Come on, you have one job. All right, and then we get straight into what appears to be transformation. So this shows you taking her little wrist-mounted missile launchers off, and then you just start spreading the wings, doing everything you gotta do. And then you'll reattach those missiles on her hips in bird mode. They kind of blend in pretty well. And then your finished product. So it's very straight and to the point. Nothing fancy, just a good old transformer. All right, now we see Air Razor's beast mode, which is, I believe, a peregrine falcon. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what she is. And you can see it's uh, pretty faithful, honestly. The legs are tucked up fairly neatly and do a pretty convincing job of being the actual bird legs. Uh, the wings are very articulated. There's a lot of hinges here. So you got like one hinge, two hinge, three hinges, four hinges, right? So you can kind of get these nice curved sweeps in the wings. They can bend down for like roosting. Very neat. And then the wing tips can fold in and out. So you can get her kind of more, you know, rested position, something like that. So a lot going on here. The tail, pretty stationary. You can lift it up, but it's not really supposed to come up. It's pegged in there. The head can spin a full 360. It can also lift up and down for posing. And the mouth even opens and closes. So I gotta say, it's kind of tight. So when you get all the way closed, it's a real pain to get it back out. At least on my copy. Maybe yours will be a little looser. And the legs do articulate. Though you don't want to move them too much, so you basically just want to bend this joint, maybe this joint, though it's kind of preset in there, and then you got the 
uh, ball jointed ankles, which is not my favorite thing. I thought we had moved beyond ball joints at larger scales, but I guess because they were small size, it just made more sense. And then here on the back, you can see the missile launchers attached. You can leave them on there. You can take them off. Honestly, I think they help it because without the missile launchers, you just have the robot thighs, which don't look any better. These at least kind of look like, you know, feathers or something. So yeah, overall, I mean, it, it accomplishes what it's supposed to be. It's a bird <laughs> with bird movement and bird things. So yeah, I think, uh, I think she's got a very solid beast mode. I like it. Very poseable, looks good at most angles. What more can you ask for? Now here we get a little brief history of Air Razor. So you kind of have her different forms. You got pre-Beast Wars vehicle mode, regular beast, and then transmetal beast mode. Now the transmetal form never actually appeared in the cartoon. It was just, you know, a toy, and then was picked up in some comic stories that expanded on the cartoon canon. Canonically, this is the form that she takes after uh, Tiger Hawk splits back into Air Razor and Tigertron. Sadly, I don't have that really sweet Transmetal Tigertron from Bacom, though I, I wish I did. <laughs> I really wish I could afford that thing. It's worth pointing out that this isn't the only pre-Beast Air Razor there is. There was the original Club Toy, which was a uh, remold of the Energon Slug Slinger figure. I don't have that, but I did manage to go to BotCon 2016 and get this one. And honestly, I much prefer the Slipstream retool over the Slug Slinger one anyway. It just suits her so much better. But yeah, it makes for a good proof of concept, right? You have a vehicle mode, which is what she would have rocked on Cybertron. Then when they have to come to Earth and adapt, she becomes a realistic bird. And then when she gets upgraded, she becomes basically a blend of the two. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the Transmetal toy is significantly bigger than this new one. Like, by today's standards, puts her almost at a Voyager size, so... Yeah, scaling is not what it used to be. Right now, we're going to go ahead and transform Air Razor. So, the first thing you want to do is remove her missiles. Kind of wriggle them loose. Set them off to the side. Like so. Stretch out her legs. They're tabbed into the pelvic piece here. You can see the little tab there. So you'll need to kind of swing them out and then bring them down. Like this. Straighten everything out. Then spin it around. Then spin it around. And then Spin it around. <laughs> a lot of twists and turns to get her legs the right way. There you go. There's that. Now let's lift her tail piece up. Get that out of the way. And then, you see these are her robot arms. You're gonna pull these out. Just kind of plugged into the sides there. Straighten the wrists. Turn the arms. Lift up the shoulder pads this. And then you want to pull this panel back, which gives her heads room to spin. And you're going to rotate all this stuff down. Uh, make sure her mouth is closed, like the beak, so it's not pushing against anything. All right, so you get all that. Then you see these gold colored hinges here. Gonna swing her torso area forward, which includes her wings and everything, forward and down until it all pushes together like this. Make sure this is pressed back in. Make sure her tail feathers are pressed back in like so. All right. And then the wings are gonna kind of fold in on themselves. So you can see there's this tab here. It's gonna plug into some little notches in the back like so. And then just bend that last section to the side. Do the same thing here. All right. And give her these nice compact wings. Looks really good, right? And then lastly, for the finishing touches, 
place her missiles on her forearms. And here you go. We now have the new and improved Air Razor. And she looks just phenomenal. Like, so show accurate with just a little bit of the flavorings of her toy, where it gets a little more orange than the TV show. And the proportions are just fantastic. She looks really great. Very poseable. She's got the ball jointed head with a gorgeous head sculpt, too. Look at that. A little metallic purple and gold there. She's got the bird like black eyes with the green pupils. All right, and then her shoulders, they swing in and out, up and down. A bicep swivel, single bend elbows. No wrist swivel, but she's pretty slender, so that'd be kind of hard to engineer in there. Got a full waist swivel. This little piece actually lifts up to give her more posability in case she needs to, you know, kick upwards or something. She's got universal hips, a kind of high knee swivel, low thigh, single bend knees, ball jointed feet. So technically these can bend too, but it looks kind of unnatural. You want to keep them straight if you can. So yeah, she's got pretty much everything that you'd want. You can also open her wings up, make her look like she's flying. And I think, uh, I think we got a winner here. I think we have just a quality quality figure and i have really no complaints at all like they really really hit it out of the park here with air razor one thing you'll notice is that from the early designs and renders to now they took the maximal symbol off of the bird head thankfully and put it here on her wrist which looks a lot more natural much better placement i will say i guess if i had any one thing to point out her waist does come off looking a little weird like kind of tapers in and then juts out with this little flat piece here. And you can also actually like see the uh, plastic, uh, what do you call it, like a mushroom peg inside. So it's not perfect, not perfect. Though still easily the best Air Razor toy we've ever received. And here's our robot mode group shot with her two other forms. And you might notice something with the... Uh, Pretty Beast Air Razor. A little black spot on the face there. That's not a dog nose. That's where the paint just decided to flake off while I was transforming her. So, awesome. <laughs> really awesome. This big old unsightly black spot right there in the middle of her face. And it's a BotCon exclusive toy, so I can't just like go buy another one. Um, that just stinks, man. <laughs> Like, I really like that toy, and that is so unsightly now. I've never customized anything, but I may have to find, like, some really perfect color-matching yellow paint to just paint over that, because that... Why? <laughs> why does this... Why do these things happen? But yeah, um, aside from that tragedy, still looks very cool, and still, in my opinion, one of the coolest female Transformer molds ever. Like, the Windblade design the original version of this was already awesome and then they went and retooled it to slipstream to make it like a seeker and made it just as cool and a little more you know traditional transformer so this just being a direct redoc of that is naturally just really great and then we have the transmetal air razor and i'm not a huge fan of her robot mode uh, it's just i don't know it's weird it's ungainly the only reason she's even standing up right now is because one of her wingtips is touching the bottom there in the back. Um, doesn't balance well. Doesn't pose very well because even though she's got all these ball joints, there's a lot of clearance issues. So, yeah, not my favorite toy, uh, which stinks because I didn't have it for many, many years. And I always wanted the Transmetal Air Razor because it looked cool. And then finally getting it in hand, I was like sorely disappointed with just the play value of the toy. Uh, kind of like Animated Ratchet got him not too long ago and I mean after loving the character to get his toy in hand I'm like wow this kind of this isn't a very good toy at all <laughs> so yeah um yep I think it's very safe to say that our new air razor is just the best one even though these are different forms of the character just overall the quality the stability posability everything is there 
I will say that this one's a close second, though. If you don't count the ruined face. So yeah, I absolutely love this figure. It's easily one of my favorites from the second wave. It's kind of right up there with Huffer as far as the deluxes. And Ractonite we'll get a look at next. And if you're a fan of Air Razor, if you like the character, you like the design, and you've always hoped for just like a proper update, because she's never had uh, a new toy based on her, you know, regular beast form outside of the original. They've never done a generation style update. So this is a first for her. And I gotta say, they really hit it out of the park. Like, I'm good. I don't think we ever need another Air Razor update because they did it. Uh, I would have preferred less orange, personally. I think if they had stuck a little closer to the original render colors with just the different shades of gold, that would have been better. But I do still like her. Even though the orange is a little plain for my taste compared to, you know, how ornate her armor should be, it's still, you know, in the same ballpark of the right color, so I kind of forgive it. So, yeah, I uh, absolutely think that if you have any love for Beast Wars or the Air Razor character, she is well worth picking up. I don't think you'll be disappointed with her at all. You know, the transformation's good, the QC is good, posability in both modes is great, the look in both modes is great. You can have a lot of fun with her, and I really look forward to pairing her up with Tigatron whenever he comes out. Though he's not officially announced yet, but come on, we know he's coming. But, as always, that is just how I feel about this toy. Now I want to know what you all think of Air Razor. Do you see yourselves picking up a copy of this? Is she the update you've been waiting for? Or is there something keeping you from making the purchase? Either you're just not interested, or you think they could have done a better job. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Deluxe Class Air Razor. And with all that said, I will see you next time.